Gabriella, welcome uh, to Barcelona Metropolitan, and we would like to hear about your story, your journey as an artist from Argentina to Barcelona. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Victor. Well, you know, we'd love to hear what you have to say about your journey here. Uh, can you talk to us and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so my name is Gabriela Bacin. Uh, I come from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I've been living in Catalonia for four, four years now, but in Barcelona, only one. Um, I'm an artist, an illustrator, and a muralist. Um, I work freelance, and since I came here, it's really uh, been a very wonderful journey. Um, it, yeah, Barcelona is a great city for artists to develop, so I'm very happy here. So what made you want to come to Barcelona? Um, I came as a tourist and I loved it. It was like a feeling of this city has everything. It has the sea, it has the mountains, it has the culture, it has great people. Um, I wanted to have this experience. So, yep. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. How would you describe yourself? How does, how does an artist describe themselves? Oof, that's a hard one. Um... Myself as an artist, well, I, I, I can make them, I mean, I think that in my artwork, I, I, I do a lot, a lot of things that speak about me. Like my art is very, um, has a very kind of considered way of, uh, of proposing the, the messages. I try to always be kind and be, make the messages to be um, really empathic and uh, to create, yeah, that a lot of empathy, and, other, and to be bold, but at the same time to, to say like strong things, you know? Um, okay. And it's not, yeah. <laughs> so if I had to explain what I do, um, it's really, I mean, I, as I said, I make illustration, I make mural, I also work as a designer. And as I work in different kind of uh, industries from advertising to product to uh, making, uh, support as graphic designer, I need to be very versatile. But I always try to keep the message uh, strong, to keep the message bold, uh, to use uh, bold colors, um, yeah, and to stick to my style as as much as I can. So, All right. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. in the life of an artist, what does a normal day look like for you? For me, uh, lately, because it's not ha it's not always the same. Uh, I try in the morning to put my meetings to um, organize my day, my energy. Sometimes I go to yoga classes. Sometimes I go for a walk. But I I always try to in the morning make all the the work that is more in the desk. Um, and then in the afternoons I take my time to create, to work on my portfolio, to work on my online shop or the coming exhibition or the coming project. Sometimes to send emails to potential clients or to reply or to handle ongoing projects. So um, it's pretty versatile. Okay, so the, these routines that you do in the morning, do they help you then inspire you to be more creative later in the afternoon? Is that what I'm hearing? Hopefully they do. Not always. But yeah, <laughs> but I, I try I try to. I, I, um, there's something that I discovered this year that I love really much. That is, like going out for, uh, for a coffee with a book, like just for maybe 20 minutes, and that really yes. uh, puts my energy in a nice place to start creating. All mm -hmm. right, well, share with me this. What is your background? Okay, so as I told you before, I grew up in Barcelona. Uh, but wow. I didn't grow up in Barcelona. I grew up in Buenos Aires, but that was strange. Okay, I grew up in Buenos Aires, and <laughs> and um, so as a child, I was always very um, interested in arts and on all types of expressions. Uh, luckily, my my father and my mother really supported me, and. When I had to decide what to do as an adult, I was really, it was a hard decision because I liked so many things. Um, so I, I decided to study two careers at the same time because <laughs> why not? Uh, which was a horrible, horrible, horrible decision. I mean, of course, I made them both. 
and I actually made them like in the hard way, like going to the toughest uh, subjects with the toughest teachers and making everything super exigent. But so I suffered a lot. I got to make them fine. I studied fine, fine art and graphic design at the University of Buenos Aires, which is like a very important university. Um, so the good thing about that is that I, uh, after all that process, I had a lot of different types of tools to handle a lot of different types of projects and maybe even at the same time because I had that training. I see. On my last year of, uh, of my, yeah, I, I started even working in my last year when I, when I finalized with, with fine arts, I kept studying graphic design for one year more. Um, then I started working and I, then it was when I started to really see how um, I wanted to fit in the, in the liberal world, you know. And a few years after that, I uh, said, I always wanted to, to do something more um, theoretical too. So I made a master in, in communicational design, uh, which is something that I didn't know that existed, that it's like you, you, you can study all the um, designs or the art from any perspective, including sociological, philosophical, uh, cultural studies, uh, gender studies, um, so it was really, really interesting after all this practical, and it also had a theory, of course, but to dive into like really, really uh, deep in a theoretical way. So I think I got a um, yeah, pretty uh, deep background <laughs> with all my studies. And so your studies, let's take talk about your career. You, you grabbed your career, you started your career um, mm -hmm. at the university, and then what happened? So then I first started uh, to work at an editorial as a designer. At the same time, started to paint some murals there in Buenos Aires and to start okay. making my, my first uh, also freelance job. Um, afterwards, I spent like four years working as head of uh, communication and design at a big school there in, in Buenos Aires. And then it's when we came here to Barcelona and I decided to go fully freelance. Um, and yeah, and now I am exploring different uh, markets of, yeah, I like to keep it like that. Commercial illustration, mural illustration, design, and that's it. Okay. So how would you then describe your artistic style? Um, yeah. So I always struggle in putting in words what I do. I think that it's hard. <laughs> But I think that it's bold, it's energetic, it has a lot of energy, um, it has a lot of girl power, it has a lot of introspection. Uh, it's versatile because even I have a, a strong identity, I always adapt to the client and to the needs. Um, um, what else can I say? Yeah. I like working with, with social subjects to have social impact in my work. That's not always possible, but when I can, I really enjoy it. Um, well, yeah. let's take, take it from that perspective, trying to have a social impact. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think are the best and worst parts of your, uh, of your work? Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, having, being a freelance gives you a lot of, uh it's like uh it's amazing and it's horrible at the same time but i i i i um, i still choose it because you have to handle your own time your own freedom your own projects you are your boss you make all the decisions and so the the possibility of handling your time it's really um amazing that's the best part of my job um no, and not only handling my time, but also being aware of that I am responsible of getting or not getting the project. I am responsible for the project to be successful or not be successful. So that's on the one hand the best, but in the other hand, it's also the worst because you get a lot of pressure when things don't go as you expect. And if you are like me and are like really exigent, then you suffer a lot because it, sometimes it's hard to, to get to your expectations. Um, so I try to work a lot on that. 
And I think that, that the worst part is that it's handling uh, expectations. It's handling um, when you have too much work or you, when you have too, uh, yeah, when you don't have enough work, both situations are can be very overwhelming. Um, so okay. yeah, it can, yeah. So make, you love uh, you love executing, but you also have to make sure you have predictable income flow. And so on one hand, you're basically channeling all your energies and, and creative uh, competencies into the artistic stage, but you need to make sure that a little bit further down the line, you still have more work to do. And I guess, uh, how, how long does a, a job or a project normally take? It depends, really, because, I mean, if you make, for example, something like a book, a book can take a year. But if you make, um, I don't know, a post for Instagram, you can make it in two hours, you know? So it it, it really depends on, on, well, I don't know if two hours, but <laughs> each project has its own time and each, each team has its own. There are people that just want, like, make me this and that's it. And there are people who you need to work and work and work until you, you get where they want to be. So it, there's not, not a rule for that. All right, so you've been doing this for a while. What career mm -hmm. advice would you give to somebody who would like to be an artist or an art director? Yeah, so um, I would say, like, try to 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 ask questions, to to embrace your desire, and and try to go for it, even when it seems like this is so far away. I have no clue. Just ask. Just uh talk to people who have been there talk to people who are doing these who are doing work that you like people should usually it's uh, nicer than you think like sometimes we we don't uh knock doors because they say they we are like afraid of projection and uh -huh. then i think that it's important actually to cultivate projection like it makes you stronger so um i would recommend to yeah to just try it and try to make it as, and I think that here again, the expectations come. So know where you are, but ask the questions, knock the door, make your work, sit on the desk. And sometimes what happens a lot, it's like, I want to be here and I'm here. And then I don't know how to close this up. So it's like, there's something about sitting every day, making 10 minutes of whatever it is you want to make that makes your, your work uh, grow. So work on your things and then also work on asking for what you want and for learning what you need to learn to get there. Okay. And that's what well, I let me ask you this. Well, what is the role of creativity? And how, do, how does one oh. become more creative? Okay. Um, but th those are two different questions. So I, I will start with one and then so um i think that creativity is really really what make helps us discover us in in ways that we didn't know it uh i mean not creativity in the sense of making something expre expressive that's a, a creative act of course but creativity you know when when you you get something out of yourself that you didn't know that was there and I think that it's a really uh, deep journey, actually. Um, like when when you when we we sit and do whatever it is that we do, we are finding ourselves with ourselves. We are finding with our fears. We are finding with our strengths. We are finding with the things that we like, the things that we don't. So it's really a way of of um, of playing. Uh, we, we in the best scenario it's like playing with ourselves and the worst scenario it's sometimes um yeah just being our worst judge so i think that creativity it's really important to cultivate and to cultivate a, a, um, a good relationship with it because it's a way of the way that we that we um vinculate to ourselves in the most uh, genuine way that's what i think and how to become more creative uh it, it's very personal. I think that's like going to a lot of things that you like to get a lot of inspiration, to get free time, to relax, to enjoy, and to let things flow. <laughs> I mean, and that 
but I will say something contradictory to that. Also, when, once you have let the things flow and you know what you would like to do, then sit on the desk and do it and commit. But first, you need to have some space. All right, that's good advice. So, if you're an artist uh, and, and you're in the field of, you know, uh, creatives, how does one network uh, here in Barcelona? How how do you get to know other people in your community? Uh, okay, this year was a lot about that because I moved here this year. So there are a lot of events going on, um, and I think that go, like researching a little bit and like showing up <laughs> uh, and it's a great way actually meeting other artists to to grow as an artist too because you can um you can share about your struggles you can share about your your fears you can share about your wins you can ask questions you can meet people that is in other levels than you are so um i think that's really important to I actually don't like the word the word networking. It's more like hang, hanging out and maybe making friends afterwards if that goes well. Um, but for for me, it was it's key to be surrounded by other artists because they get me. Another uh, beautiful city, uh, Buenos Aires. Um, mm -hmm. Compared to where you came from, is it do you find it harder to meet other people and hang out with them in uh, Barcelona versus Buenos Aires or because here in Barcelona, there are so many things to do, so many things to see, so many things to go to. Um, and uh, how do you compare those two cities? Okay. Yeah, I think it's not fair, the comparison, because in Buenos Aires, I live uh, a lot of years and I have like, like all my network is there from all my life. So it's really easy there because I know all the people, I know all the places. And if I don't know, I know who to ask. So in that sense, yes. But then I find Barcelona a very easy city. Like what, what maybe I do have is like fear of missing out because we have so many things happening at the same time that it's like, I want to go to everything. So, right. okay. um, but I, I, I find it uh, easy to, to find nice people in Barcelona. It's not hard. I mean, maybe the challenge of people who, who migrate and who, yeah. It's like finding your people, you know, not just knowing people, but to, to, but that's something that takes time and that will be like that here and everywhere. So, yeah, but people, it's usually open and very cool. Okay. And um, what kind of projects do you see in the uh, near future? Like, what are you planning? Uh, so... I'd love to, this year I made an exhibition. I'd love to make another exhibition for next year. I want to work in my online shop to start sending mo more prints and more objects because I that's something that I started exploring this year and I really loved. Um, but mainly I'd love to make a commercial illustration, you know, for advertising or for products like maybe tags for, I don't know, cans or, or wines or whatever. I, I love that. Um, what else would I like? Mural, mural art is something that I really love. And I, I, since I came to in, I used to live in Tarragona before, and there I, I met uh, some murals in Barcelona, not yet. So if you are listening to this, uh, check out my portfolio and come back to me. And <laughs> we can make any of those projects. All right. Well, on that point, how can people learn more about you or and see your work? Okay, so you can go to my website, which is gabrielevasit.com you can check it out on my on my linkedin profile or in instagram the same Gabriela Basi. and you can write me and ask me whatever um my agenda for next year is open so feel free to reach out anytime okay is there anything else that you would like to share with uh with the international community here in barcelona uh no just reach out if you want to connect and i'll be here so that's cool <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's lovely to get to know you a little bit more, Gabriela, and I hope to see you at some of our events. Um, yeah. you know, we have an event actually this evening. Uh, we're oh. we're doing uh, some drinks. If you'd like to come, I'd love to invite you to sure. to, uh, to a beer. It's going to be Perfect. in Barnabas. And mm -hmm. um, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to call. And everybody just wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, Marcelo Metropolitan is always looking for interesting, fascinating people who have 
chosen to make Barcelona their home. Gabriela is an excellent example of growing, taking what she's learned uh, from where she came from, applying it here, and growing her career. Gabriela, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye -bye. You too. Bye-bye.